Hello and welcome back to the Dividend Experiment, the channel that can help you build a sustainable dividend portfolio. The content that will be discussed is intended for information and educational purposes only and should not be considered investment advice or investment recommendation. In today's video we're going to address the latest company one of you guys requested for the Is It Time To Buy series. Remember if you want a company to be submitted to the Is It Time To Buy series and be the next video made then you can add it to the list on the post in the members area of the discord once you join the dividend cult. This is just one of the benefits you'll enjoy as a cult member. The reason I made it cult members only submission is just because of the number of requests I mean, it wasn't fair that I couldn't have time to make all of them so it's now on a priority submission basis but all videos will be available for everyone to watch on the channel. As always, these videos aren't a recommendation to carry out any activity, whether buy, sell or hold, but I'm just giving my thoughts and can serve as a basis for your own due diligence. In today's video, we're going to take a deeper look at Aviva PLC, listed on the London Stock Exchange, and is a component of the FTSE 100, the biggest stocks in the UK market. As this one is a UK listed company, we don't need to pay any withholding tax, which is one of the better benefits of getting a company from the UK, no matter where you're resident of. So what type of company is Aviva PLC? Aviva PLC provides various insurance, retirement, investment and savings products in the United Kingdom and internationally. The company offers life insurance and annuity products as well as pension fund business and lifetime mortgage products. It also provides insurance cover to individuals, small and medium sized businesses for all sorts of risks and liabilities. In addition, the company provides investment management services for institutional pension funds. It markets its products through a network of insurance brokers as well as my Aviva platform. The company is formerly known as CGNU PLC and changed its name to Aviva PLC in July 2002. Aviva PLC was founded in 1696 and is headquartered in London, the United Kingdom. In a snapshot, here are the key dividend facts about the company. At the time of writing, Aviva was trading at 413 pence. Aviva has a current dividend yield of about 7.17%. Aviva's dividend is much higher than the bottom 25% of dividend payers in the UK stock market and earnings are forecast to grow at 33.52% per year. Now that we've seen what the company does, its dividend information snapshot, let's check out the rules of the dividend experiment and see if the company is a good fit for the dividend experiment portfolio. If you're not familiar with the rules then I've made a free 16 page downloadable PDF guide and if you want a copy then all you need to do is sign up to the email list in the description below. Ok let's go through the rules. Rule number one, the company pays a dividend or is likely to pay in the immediate term. Aviva pays a significant dividend and at 7.17% it's in the top 25% of UK dividend payers as well as within the dividend experiment guidelines which is usually between 3 to 8% so no issues there. My ideal payment schedule is for the company to have quarterly payments but in the UK having a company that pays out that often is actually quite rare. The majority of UK companies pay twice a year or semi-annually and that's the case with Aviva PLC with a smaller interim payment in around May each year and a bigger final dividend in September or October typically. Rule 2. The company is a natural dividend payer judging from its industry or business model. Companies in the financial sector are pretty good at being natural dividend payers. Their whole business revolves around financial engineering and they should have a good picture of the best way to return excess capital to shareholders and future projections. This means they can allocate the optimum amount to us in the form of dividends. Insurance and pension funds are even better than the average financial company too because of the actuarial basis that they calculate their revenue and profit. For example, when you get an insurance quote, they calculate the odds of you doing the thing you're insured against and make you pay an amount that works out in their favour according to the risk probabilities. It's like being the house at the casino. Some people get big payouts, but on the aggregate, the house wins. Rule 3. The company should be a top player in its industry. As usual, a good way to check the market concentration in the industry is to head over to Guru Focus to check out their pie charts. Now there are some problems with this as it only defines by geographic area and it measures market capitalization rather than more relevant metrics for market dominance. However, it does give us a good indication of how big a company is relative to its market. As we can see in the insurance sector for the UK and Ireland, Aviva is a pretty big competitor and only Prudential takes up a bigger market weighting. This is a good sign for being a leader in the space and we can feel pretty confident as it's twice as big as third place Admiral Group and the top 5 companies here take up 75% of the market. Rule 4. Aim to buy the company at a historically great price. I use the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio which measures how much investors are paying for current earnings as a first step to determine if a firm is at a good valuation. 
A high PE ratio may be a sign that investors anticipate rapid future growth, but in general for dividend paying companies it's not what we're looking for. The PE ratio is calculated by dividing the share price by the earnings per share and therefore can only realistically be used if the company is profitable. The current PE ratio is a little skewed, but the forward PE, or the PE over the next year, looks pretty good at 11.7. Another way to check relative value is to take the 5 year average dividend yield and compare that to the current yield. If the current yield is above the 5 year average yield, then we can see there's an indication of good value. For Aviva, as you can see from the screenshot, it's at a 5 year average dividend yield of 5.5%. And the current yield is indeed higher at 7.17%. And this is obviously a simplistic way to value a company, but can be a good indicator that we're on the right track. Rule 5. The company is growing and innovating even as it matures. Aviva's revenue at 36.9% per year is forecast to grow faster than the UK market, which is only 3.5% per year. Its revenue is also forecast to grow faster than 28% per year, which is its respective industry, so that's another good sign. Aviva are not slowing down on the innovation front either and have a venture arm to invest in portfolio companies. One interesting acquisition fairly recently was of Wealthify, which those on the channel will be familiar with as it was a competitor for the previous Man vs Machine Challenge series. The investment was part of Aviva's strategy to build customer loyalty by providing customers with a wide range of insurance and investment services, all managed through the convenience and simplicity of Aviva's digital hub, My Aviva. Wealthify became accessible to Aviva's customers through My Aviva, where it was available alongside other Aviva products and services. Aviva's investment will also support Wealthify's business development, helping to accelerate Wealthify's future growth plans. Overall, a good sign for the company and for this rule. Rule 6. The company is a sustainable dividend payer. Right now, Aviva's payout ratio is skewed due to negative earnings, so that's a bad sign. However, this could just be a temporary state of affairs. If we look at the cash payout ratio, it's a very reasonable at 11%, which is way below any warning sign for being at risk. It's just the earnings we have to watch out for. As the company and analysts have projected the company to have profitable earnings going forward, I think it's possible we can tentatively accept it or wait and see until next earnings report to see what the situation is if you want to be extra cautious. Rule 7. The company has a history of payments. Aviva's dividend history is not the most stable, which is quite disappointing, especially from what I was saying before in Rule 2, about having the potential to be a natural dividend payer. Overall, if you invest in Aviva, you should be prepared to see some volatility in the level of payments, but unlikely to see a complete and sustained cut in the amount paid out. It's not a complete rejection because of this, but something you will have to accept comes with an often high-yielding company. Rule 8. The company must have a strong moat. According to Morningstar, or as I call it, the Moat Company, as it's famous for its economic moat system of measurement, Aviva PLC has no such moat. I think I would disagree with this analysis of no moat, as there is some protection from new entrants to the market, as it requires huge capital to set up a business like this. The moat is not so strong against current competitors, however, so that's something to watch out for. Someone smaller taking up Aviva's market share by operating more efficiently or cheaper. Are there any headwinds or tailwinds for the company? Overall, Aviva is showing good signs of maturing as a company after previous, perhaps, mismanagement. It's consolidated into the UK and Canada now and looks like it's focused on becoming a boring, high cash generating insurance business now, which is ideal for dividends, really. The company is making some significant strides outside of annuities as well. The general insurance industry's underwriting has improved and premiums and clientele have fared well during the pandemic. The introduction of auto-enrolment has helped the defined contribution workplace pension platform maintain stable asset growth. The rationale for expanding its footprint in the wealth management sector with the £385 million acquisition of Succession Wealth is that it's a stable workplace pensions provider. Finally, Aviva's competitive advantage in digitisation is its strategic trick up its sleeve to fend off competitors. Costs that can be controlled are declining and long-term digitisation may enhance cross-selling of its products. Summary and verdict. Overall, I'd say this is a decent buy. It's not super undervalued, and the short term may flag up some concern, but it does genuinely look like Aviva is evolving into a more dividend oriented mature company, which is exactly what we're looking for. If you're expecting the already very high 7% yield to last forever, I would be slightly hesitant, as the company has not been the most reliable at keeping a straight track record for dividends. They have stated it will increase next year, but we'll have to wait and see if that continues further on into the future. 
It's likely, in my opinion, they'll pay some form of dividend, and it'll be significant, but possibly not always going to be in the high single digits. So I'd say this is a buy, and a dividend investor could add to or start a position now, but I wouldn't be super excited about buying a truckload right now. Now let's see what the analysts are saying about Aviva. It's important to remember that we are looking at this through the lens of a dividend investor, whereas the analysts are taking a more comprehensive look at the company or stock as a whole. So analysts in October are saying four of them are saying strong buy, nine of them are saying buy, six of them are saying hold, and only two are saying underperform. So quite a range of opinions, but more analysts are positive than negative, so they essentially agree with me on the whole. What do you think of Aviva? Perhaps it suits your investing style. Leave your comments and thoughts below. I always really like to see what you guys think. Remember, if you want to submit a stock to be next on the list of the Is It Time to Buy dividend analysis, then it is just a case of sending a message on the relevant Discord channel. If you liked this video, and if you made it this far, I'm guessing you probably did, then I have some good news for you. I'm giving away my PDF guide to the 10 dividend investing commandments, or the criteria that I use to pick dividend paying stocks, and I'm giving it away to you for free. All you need to do is submit your email in the link below, and it'll get delivered to your inbox straight away. Again, that's for free. But that's not the only benefit of joining the email. You also get updates on the almost daily dividend portfolio, interesting stock ideas or news, and special deals and free stuff that I can share with you. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. See you.